Hello. When we were talking about railways last time, we thought chiefly about those coming in and out of London. Do you remember the stations? Paddington, Euston, King's Cross, Liverpool Street, London Bridge, Waterloo, and Victoria. But when we're travelling about London, we usually take a bus or maybe the underground, and then we travel on the Northern Line, the Central, or Piccadilly. London has one of the largest underground railway systems in the world. Why is this, John? Well, Wendy, it's partly due to the large numbers of people that live in London and work in London, and they have to travel around quickly. But it's also due to the fact that it's very easy to build underground railways beneath London. Just imagine if you had to tunnel through a solid rock. But underneath London, there's a layer of clay, blue clay. This is soft enough, you see, to cut into fairly easily. So tunnels are dug in the clay layer whenever possible. But digging tunnels, especially safe tunnels, is a very skilled job, of course. It's done by pushing a metal shield into the earth. It's something like an apple core. And from inside this shield, men cut a large hole ahead. Then the shield is pushed forward. Now, the walls mustn't collapse, otherwise they might bury the men. So they have to put metal strips in to hold the earth up. By this method, of course, the tunnel gradually edges forward. Now, in some sections, they work in from both ends, and gradually the two sections of the tunnel become nearer and nearer, until finally, of course, they meet in the middle. Here's the cutting edge of the shield, which pushes into the clay. Inside are the cutters, which dig away as they turn. Here are the rams, which push the shield forward. And there is the lining in position. The clay is lifted up, falls along the conveyor into trucks. We see them here, and these trucks take it to the surface. Let's just see the digger in action, shall we? These are the cutting blades of the digger eating their way through the clay. The clay rolls away down the conveyor, off into these trucks, and they take it to the surface. One section is ready. The engineers are waiting for the breakthrough from the other section. Here it comes. They all seem pleased. And no wonder, it's less than an inch off centre.
Now for the lining. Concrete sections in this part of the tunnel, but in other parts they use metal. That digger was at work on the Victoria Line Tunnel. Why do we need another underground, John? Well, this new line, of course, Wendy, is <laughs> going to connect up the mainline stations, like King's Cross and Euston and Victoria. And it's necessary, of course, to move people through central London quickly and easily, and especially so during the rush hours. It will run from Walthamstow, Walthamstow Central in the northeast, via Black Horse Road, Tottenham Hale, Seven Sisters, Finsbury Park, Highbury and Islington, King's Cross and St Pancras, Euston, Warren Street, Oxford Circus, Green Park, Victoria, Pimlico, Vauxhall, Stockwell, and finally to Brixton in the south. How do the engineers know where to start digging? Oh, well now this is very difficult because we've got to have a good look underground before we do anything at all. And there's quite a lot down there, believe it or not. There are things like gas mains and water mains and cables for telephones and electricity. And of course we have to make a plan of all these things, try and avoid them, try and keep to the clay layer, and try and join up with the other tube lines that are already in existence. And they have to plan how we can move about easily down there. Nobody wants to wander around in cold, dark tunnels. So men construct inner linings, fit up lighting, and tile the walls of passageways and platforms so that they can be kept clean and bright. A final polish. Each station has its own symbol. This is Euston. Do you remember the arch built for the London to Birmingham Railway? And here's King's Cross. There are the crowns for the king and the cross. And there's Finsbury Park. And Highbury. Here I am in one of the bright new warm platforms. I came down here by escalator, of course. Lots of people can be kept moving at busy times during the day. So the escalators are installed in each station. Here you see engineers putting weights on a new escalator. These weights represent people. They're testing the brakes to see if they can get the escalator to stop very quickly in an emergency. But of course, we must pay for our ticket. And an awful lot of time is wasted when we have to line up for the ticket collector to have a look at our ticket. And of course, some people try to travel on the underground without paying their fare. So on the new Victoria line, we have automatic fare gates. And they use these new yellow tickets. These have brown backs which carry messages rather like the sound tape of a tape recorder. Here I am with two children from Laycock School. I bought my ticket from the machine. The children, of course, had to have half fares, so they bought theirs at the office. We put our tickets into the slot 
and the message was read by the machine and the tickets were given back to us. As the tickets had the correct code, the gates opened to let us through. The trains have been specially devised and designed and there are many new improvements. Perhaps you'd like to see one of the old tube trains. These, of course, were steam-driven. The new ones are silver with large windows. They're double glazed to cut down noise. And, of course, the trains are electric, using current from the track. Inside, there are comfortable carriages with room for people to stand during the rush hours. There's fluorescent lighting so you can read while travelling along. Trains are built in Birmingham. Complicated electrical circuits have to be put in. We never see these, of course, but they're for train control, for lighting, opening and closing the doors. A host of things that we never see or realize take place. A final polish for the outside of the train. And inside, we have work for a very different sort of craftsman. He provides the comfortable padded seats that we all know. Nimble fingers are required for this job. And you have to be careful not to swallow the nails. And so it's nearly ready. When finished, the trains have their depot at Northumberland Park. Here they are tested and serviced, ready for their journeys. A final wash and off she goes. Mr Eagle, you've been driving trains in London Underground for many years now. What's it like driving the new Victoria Line train? Well, it's quite an experience, really, operating a completely new type of equipment. Are you still called a train driver? No, we're called ATOs, Automatic Train Operator. Can you tell us anything interesting that happened when you were driving trains before you started this new job? Well, one instance, I came upon a horse who was trotting alongside the track, I had to follow him to the station ahead, where the staff came out and got rid of the horse. Now I could proceed on it. Are the trains never driven manually now, that is, by human drivers? Yes, quite often driven manually, in and outside, in depots. And of course, if there's a failure of the automatic equipment, then we have to drive them manually then. This signal controls the speed of the train and runs all along the track, giving a code for fast speed along straight runs and slower speeds for bends and near stations. The other controls give special messages for braking and stopping. It is used in place of the signals and lights we see on overhead railways. Is there anything else new you would like to tell us about on the new Victoria Line? Yes, we have what we call a carrier wave. This puts us into instant communication with the train regulator in the control office. So when you reach Northumberland Park Depot for duty, what do you do then? Well, we go there to test the train, get it ready, bring it so it's perfectly safe to bring it to service, carry passengers. He tests the controls, especially the brakes. He sends his assistant down through the carriages to test the brakes in each carriage, and also to see if the telephone is working 
because on these trains the driver can speak to all the passengers. He changes the indicator and now he's ready to go. Mr. Eagle speaks to the traffic regulator who works in the control room at Cogbert Street. There he is at the desk. He's watching two diagrams. The lower one shows where all the Victoria Line trains are at the moment. The other diagram shows what coded messages are being fed into the track. Also, there is the traffic controller. There he is at the left of your picture. It's his job to see that the trains run to the timetable. The traffic controller can see what is happening at all the stations by using the closed circuit television monitor screens. And he can make announcements to people on the platform if necessary. So, from inside this circular building at Coburg Street near Euston, the traffic controller tells Mr. Eagle he may start. So, precisely on time, Mr. Eagle sets his controls and takes the train out of the depot. they go through the tunnels of the new Victoria Line. <laughs> 